shockwaves through Colorado, the nation, and the world. The day 13 lives were lost at the hands of Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris. In the 6,153 days since then, the mother of Dylan Klebold says not an hour has passed where she hasn't thought about what her son did. Now, Sue Klebold sits down with Denver Post TV, explaining what has happened since then, the regrets, the thoughts that have gone through her head since that event on April 20th, 1999. So you have written a book that brings you in here today. Mm -hmm. It is called A Mother's Reckoning, Living in the Aftermath of Tragedy. Mm -hmm. What is it that made you feel like now is the time to do the book? It has taken me many, many years to be able to withstand what I thought would be this kind of thing, media attention, um, putting myself in the public. When you have a, a loved one who, who kills other people, it's such a horrible experience to go through and it is terribly humiliating and it's sorrowful. And um, I was just afraid for so many years. I knew that I wanted to write and to try to share the story and process it, but uh, to publish a book and to willingly put myself in public, it took me a very long time to get to a place where I was able to do that. On page 269 of the book here, you say um, there was simply a compulsion to understand how could Dylan, raised in our home, have done this? Mm -hmm. What have you come up with? Well, what I have come up with is an understanding, a belief certainly, that Dylan and Eric both were in that place at that time because of some kind of pathology that, um, and, and they were different kinds of pathologies. I believe, and certainly the research I did supported that, that Dylan's death was a murder-suicide, that he had gone into the school and participated in this event with, because it was motivated by his desire to die. And that in order to understand Dylan's involvement and his wanting to be there, I had to try to understand uh, what, what his suicidality meant to him. And I learned you know, that Dylan was having suicidal thoughts a full two years before this occurred. And I had no idea that these things were going on or that he even made notes about them in, in papers in his notebooks. What do you say to the parents who say, how did you not know? Mm -hmm. How did you not see the bomb making? Mm -hmm. You were asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. I know many people believe that, and I know that I would have said that if it had been the other way around and my child had been one who was killed by someone else. There were no behaviors there that I could see that indicated to me that he was a danger to himself or anyone else. And when you believe in someone and you perceive them to be mentally healthy, and I believe Dylan with all of my heart that he was a good human being, I was parenting what I perceived to be a normal, happy, or you know, as happy as a teen can be because it's a difficult time. I was not looking for weapons. I was not looking for any of these things that indicated that he was very uh, disturbed. So. It is hard to believe. I know that some people can't believe it. But I would only say that people who can't believe it should be very cautious because perhaps they're at greater risk because they're not able to look for those things. Anything else you want to say to parents out there or to our community? It's overwhelming to think that I'm speaking to this community because so many have suffered because of what Dylan did. I would reiterate again that I am terribly sorry for what Dylan did, for what his role in this tragedy was, and um, that my offering, the only thing that I know to do is to do what I've done, to try to write a book and share what my truth is and to see if anybody can learn anything from it. I offer it with love and um, to use whatever proceeds I have to, to explore why these things happen and do what I can to make sure they don't ever happen again. 
Thank you. Thank you very much.